Hello everyone, I know you've been waiting for this, so I did it. My new review of Chinese plastic B-flat clarinet from the Moreski brand is finally here. Pour your coffee guys, because I'm back. Before we start, I wish to express my huge gratitude to all my viewers and subscribers. And I honestly still can't believe that my review of the Moreski E201 has already collected an unreal 8 thousand views and counts. Thank you for watching, for liking my videos, for subscribing to my channel and my Boosty page and your anticipation for new videos. And of course, I really appreciate your comments. I read them all and respond if possible. Thank you. Today I will tell you a story of how I acquired a new Moreski, what it is and what you can expect from the instrument out of the box. Also, I will tell you what I think about Buffet Crampon clarinets and we will compare the intonation and sound of the Moreschi to Buffet Tosca. And there will be an additional video for my Boosty subscribers where I will tell you in details how one can improve intonation of the clarinet to a whole new level as I personally did both with this Moreschi and my Tosca and my other clarinets. So this is Amoreski and sail 288. How it got into my hands in the first place is quite an interesting story. It was at the beginning of 2020, I had an outdoor project looming in the air, and I already had a great experience with the Moreski brand after their or his clarinet before. It's funny because that person who's on AliExpress and chats with customers on behalf of the store. He always writes a messages in the first person. My custom molds. I will make a barrel. My CNC mill and so on. And the finest thing, or not very funny, I don't even know his real name and whether one person really does everything himself or is it translation difficulties. And there are different personalities. In general, for convenience, I always refer to him as Moreski. And for me, it became his like a nickname or an alias. Anyway, I asked him what his very best synthetic B-flat clarinet was. And he replied, this one. And it wasn't even in the store. And by the way, it isn't there now. Keep in mind that Moreski's assortment is much, much larger than shown in his store. Plus, he makes custom things to order. You need to write him and ask. Two double eight. He said that this is a copy of Buffet Festival. And I'm like, what? A festival? Seriously? And what's the price? The options were different. Nickel plated or silver plated keyword. And I needed a left E flat lever. And it could all be done. Fully loaded, it was about $230 with free shipping. And I like, just shut up and take my money. He made the clarinet to order, not just sent it from his warehouse. For example, during the production, he sent a photo that there would be no rings on the barrel and the bell, and asked if I would agree to such a design change. So the clarinet arrived. There was a lot in the box. Traditionally two barrels, 65 and 66 millimeters. A few swaps, like a pull-through and a polishing one, a screwdriver, a grease, and uh, I asked for additional set of parts instead of mouthpiece and reeds. But if you will tell nothing, there will be a mouthpiece, a ligature and reeds. The clarinet arrived. I couldn't wait to try it, so I did. And it was a disaster. Just a complete disaster. And you can't wait to find out what it was that I experienced such a disappointment. But they used whoop algorithms sitting on my shoulder insistently whispers in my ear that right now I should ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you didn't yet. It also tells me to thank you in advance for this. Back to the disaster! But I will pull in trick a little more and instead will tell you about construction of the clarinet. Yes, from the mechanical point of view, this is a classic buffet. Once I even transferred this throat A key to my RC Prestige when I didn't want to mess with the broken spring. There are recent innovations like an adjustable screw here on the connection of the left hand 
FC key or the stopper of the throat A flat here which is made not on the key itself but on the body of the instrument instead I don't even know if this is a buffet thing or an inspiration from some other maker there was no such thing, thing on any of my buffets even on Tosca and there is an adjustable thumb rest the pads are leather with cork in the register key and I don't know if it's a natural or artificial leather there is a nuance with pads the tone holes on the plastic clarinet gets wet much easier and heavier than on the wooden one probably because plastic doesn't absorb moisture at all unlike wood and over time the pads begin to stick noticeably to the holes which leads either to the fact that some keys refuses to open just like FC for example is just stuck closed like this or just an unpleasant sound and the feeling of a pet coming off therefore it's necessary to clean the surfaces with which the pets come into contact and lightly rub them with chalk it's unclear how posts are attached to the body are they simply inserted or screwed in some way but so far none has started to wobble the metal of the keys is much softer than that of the buffet I'd like it to be a little harder it happens that the crow foot goes out of adjustment also as on 201 I don't like the strange design of this screw between the A flat and A throat keys here's a flimsy plastic growth is glued to the metal screw it looks as unreliable as possible each joint is made as a whole piece there are no inlaid inserts on the tone holes which were on 201 by the way 201 which I think became pretty famous after my review is not produced by Moreski himself he just buys it OEM and from another manufacturer and stamps his logo on but this clarinet 288 he makes himself maybe that's why the quality of milling is much much higher than that 201 and in general externally and mechanically 288 is significantly superior to 201 it produces a solid feeling of a quality product if not for one thing but later so back to the tone holes there is an undercut under many tone holes but not under all for example it's not here and under the side keys this makes of course doubt the honesty of the festival copy I have a strong feeling that Buffet has an undercut under almost every tone hole but I personally never dealt with festival by myself only with its brother RC Prestige as for the sound my opinion is this this clarinet really sounds like a Buffet I think the most valuable part of the instrument how manufacturers define the clarinet class is it a student an intermediate or a pro model is the bore design bore design is the highest value in an instrument no manufacturer will sell you a bore of their seven thousand dollars clarinet for twenty hundred dollars simply because then no one will buy the seven thousand one no matter how much gold they put on the key work whatever fashionable carbon case they put in the the bore is gold the plastic buffet prodige has a bore from e13 which in turn is an old Yvette Schaeffer model neither the prodige nor the e13 will have at least a r13 bore let alone festival or tosca the bore is gold and here is a Chinese manufacturer surpassed everyone in general because he promised us to pour us pure gold for two hundred dollars a used plastic Yamaha will cost you a little more and will sound like a plastic Yamaha here we come to the climax to my disappointment is it so easy and effortless to take and copy a professional clarinet and sell it for two hundred dollars I've already said that for example some holes don't have an undercut I'm sure there are other important assumptions and losses that cannot be seen with the eye because in the case of the bore the count goes literally by microns when I first tried it, this instrument the throw B flat was almost a quarter tone flatter 
than it should have been. And I wasn't able to correct it in any way. Maybe there are problems with the tube, maybe with the bore in this place, I don't know. I know that it was impossible to use the instrument in this shape. Another problem was extremely flat, this side E flat, B flat, which also had a mechanical problem. This E flat, B flat and C sharp, G sharp interfere with each other. Clarinet was unsuitable for playing. I recorded a video with a demonstration of all the troubles and sent it to a seller. It's a pity I didn't save it, now it would be interesting and as relevant as possible to see how 288 played out of the box. Moreski agreed to a refund, but then something went wrong. I sent the clarinet, but he didn't receive it. The instrument just lay at Chinese customs for a month and returned to me. As a result, we came to an agreement. Moreski makes a partial refund and I keep the clarinet for myself. And I just threw it into far corner for almost two years. I was going to use it for spare parts. Here, as I said, I took the key for my RC Prestige when I needed it. Time passed and I decided to sell it. But those who know me well know me as the most responsible person. So I couldn't sell what I considered at the time to be a non-playable piece of plastic. Maybe it's a cool beginner's instrument for learning to play the clarinet. But if I said no to myself, then no. I started to prepare it for sale. By myself, I ascended the tone hall of the site E flat B flat, this one with the rolled sandpaper. It turned out well, the note went in tune, but I couldn't do anything with the terrible register key on my own. And so, along the beaten path, 288 and I went to the master technician, Vladimir Batalov. I'll say right away, Vladimir did it. In a proper way, you need to change the register tube completely, carefully, from several options to choose the one that fits best. But it's difficult and costly, and the task was set of a budget solution. So Vladimir expanded, rimmed the existing tube a little. Another option was to file it from the bore. But we decided to expand it. The clarinet came to life. The B-flat still flat. But it was no longer irreparably flat. It could be adjusted by fingering and embouchure. Yeah, it's scary to play Giselle with such a B-flat. But I could safely play Carmen. You can hear that the B-flat is low at the connections with the upper register when the right hand is down. But when it's possible to play B-flat with just two fingers or a resonant fingering, there are no big problems. Since B-flat is also a register key, there was a danger that the upper C would go sharp. And this happened, but it turned out to be a very positive story on most clarinets that I tried. The upper C and especially the B natural under it are flat. Vladimir also solved the problem of interfer of the keys C sharp, G sharp and B flat, B flat. Fine tuned the mechanics, the height of the cups, bridges connection, spring tension, eliminated knocking, etc. I came to him with a piece of plastic and left with a nice musical instrument. I changed my mind about selling it, but I wasn't going to use it either. I had my RC Prestige. In the summer of 2022, I went through a crisis of intonation. I felt that I was out of tune with anyone in the orchestra, but of course blamed myself, not an in instrument. And so one day I just freaked out and brought Mareski to the theater for a performance. As I recall now, it was the closing of the season, Don Quixote, the first clarinet part. And suddenly, everything was in tune. All the unisons with the flute went perfectly. And I finally realized that it wasn't all about me, that the instrument could be in tune by itself, and it should. Then my concept of piano clarinet was born.
when you can, like on the piano. Just press a key and get an internationally perfect note that doesn't need to be tuned with lips or fingering. At the very end of 2022, I've got a pair of Buffet Toscas from the theater where I walk, Ural Opera Ballet. And from here, a completely different story begins. The Toscas I talk about had been in the theater for two years by that time. Another musician was playing on them, and he was experiencing great difficulties. The B flat was terribly problematic, and the A had some issues too, and I knew about it, but I deliberately chose to change my prestigious for these Toscas. First of all, for the sake of the A clarinet. It's nice, albeit with nuances, but it's better than my prestige A was. And the fact that there would be problems with the B flat didn't bother me, because I already had my Moreski, which completely suited me. By problems, I mean first of all intonation. I am an orchestral musician, the intonation is a crucial priority. So, in front of us is the Buffet Crampon Tosca, an instrument considered to be the standard of orchestral clarinet these days. The price depends on the country and the dealer. For example, the famous British Howard sells it for about $6,200, with that excluded. This clarinet was purchased from an authorized dealer. It's 100% not a fake. Serial number 734267. I really regret that I didn't make a video of how this clarinet looked and played before all the modifications that had to be applied to it. You'll have to take my word on it. In the first part of the review, I was outraged that a Chinese clarinet for 200 bucks has two false notes. The French clarinet for 600 bucks has false everything, literally everything. A complete feeling that the lower joint was made at one factory, the upper one at another, a bell was brought from the third, a barrel from the fourth. Then the whole cocktail was packed in a case right in the store without any checking and sold as it is for a full price. It's necessary to break it in, they said. Over time it will take moisture and the tuning will improve. Lies. It's just lies. Two years of periodic use by one musician and six months of active playing by me personally. It is broke in enough. I will tell in order. The main problem is the mismatch between the upper and lower joints. All the tendencies of the clarinet acoustics were brought to unplayability here. The left hand in the lower register is always slightly flat. Here it was extremely low. The right hand in the upper register is always slightly sharp. It was extremely high here. When I say extremely, I mean almost quarter tone spread in intonation. At the same time, the bell doesn't match to the intonation of the lower joint at all. It was all the way sharp and suddenly the notes of the bell, C and the B natural, are almost the same quarter tone low, especially the B natural was crazy flat. Pull down the lower joint, pull down a lot and correct the right hand. All seems to have been fixed, right? But then the right hand in the lower register becomes unaccepted, unacceptably flat and the bell note simply had fled to another universe and by pulling the joints in the middle with the greater response during the register break. You remember that I complained about the flat side E flat B flat on the 2 double eight. Can you guess what was waiting me on the Tosca? On prestige this note was okay. The middle E is always very flat on the clarinet, but here it was in the same reel as the bell, not in our reel. The low F correction key corrected a couple of cent maximum. The altissima is very flat and has remained flat even after all the modifications I did. And I am just talking about intonation now, talking very fluently. I can tell you about every note of this clarinet, what's wrong with it. Wait, we've just started. Mechanics. The F tube was soldered crookedly. Seriously, it stood in the board just diagonally. The register key hissed on throw B flat, long tube, B natural and C. 
This bridge is soldered with an error. As a result, the ring D stands diagonally in relation to the tube of the tone holes. The fingers constantly slides off this hole. There's something wrong with this complex, complete section here. And we've tried many, many different ways to improve it. No result. The wood, the inside of the bow, is very porous. It just doesn't seem to be a good piece of wood from the start. I remember when the clarinet arrived, shavings were hanging from one of the holes. Shavings. For 60, 100 bucks. Here is some kind of recess in the wood. Obviously, a processing error. They tried to polish it. Well, in the end, the clarinet cracked. Unexpected ending. Warranty. Why didn't the theater return the obviously defective instrument under warranty, as I personally did with Mareski? For two years, the clarinet was in the hands of another musician, and he totally refused to do anything with it. Such a personality. He suffered, played a short barrel borrowed from me, but didn't agree to give up a clarinet in any way. And when Tosca got to me, the warranty was already expired. One more time, I just described the condition of a new top professional clarinet for $600. Minutes ago, I described the condition of a new Chinese plastic clarinet for $200, which I considered unplayable due to two, two notes out of tune. This wooden stick should never have left the walls of the factory. Buffet, guys, I hope you watch this video. You have huge problems with quality control. Could it be an accident? Maybe it's with this particular instrument everything went wrong from beginning to an end. But in general, does Buffet do normal things? We have two more Tosca pairs in the theater. They're really not so terrible, although the intonation tendencies have not gone away. The correction of the low F, which doesn't correct anything. The flat left hand, the flat bell notes, the sharp right hand in the high register, the flat altissimo. I watched the entire first round of the recent Tchaikovsky competition, all 12 clarinetists. Watch for yourself. Buffet is heard immediately. Models with Tosca mechanics have some trends. Models with classic RC Prestige or Festival mechanics have slightly different ones. But they are there from clarinet to clarinet, and Buffet does nothing with them. One participant, Vazgen Yusupov, played Jubil. You could hear it right away. It's a damn instrument that's in tune. Recently, Michael Lowenstern on his Ear Spasm channel published a review of the plastic clarinet Bakun Alpha. I love Michael very much. He's an incredibly charismatic person and a talented musician. And my attitude towards him and what he does is well shown by the fact that I posted a link to his channel right on the front page of my own channel. Michael in his video compares Bakun with Buffet R13. He offers a blind test and plays the second Brahms sonata on both. I didn't guess which is which. I just couldn't believe that a clarinet with a terrifically flat left hand and awfully flat throat B flat is the legendary R13. I seriously thought to the very end that it was some wrong buffets that were brought to Russia and somewhere there are real ones that passed quality control, selected buffets. No. This was the last straw. Buffet is a diagnosis. I sat down and started writing this script for this review. By the way, Bakun Alpha proved to be pretty good. Be sure to watch Michael's video, it's worth it. Today I can't show you Tosca in its original form. I've spent a huge amount of time, resources and money to bring it into working condition. I was interested in this, I wanted to understand if it was possible to make a candy from a piece of shit, as we say. And I was able to transfer all the accumulated experience to other instruments, in particular to my Moreski, both 201 and 288. So now I will finally play both Moreski 288 and Buffet Oscar side by side. Both clarinets heavily modified, so it doesn't represent the out-of-the-box state. 
but instead demonstrates what can possibly be done if you don't look at the instrument as a finished product, but as a canvas. I'll start from chromatic scale. And now is the very moment when I hope you are finally ready to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Now an octave test. Okay, and now I suggest you blindly evaluate the sound of both instruments. To do this, I will use the same second Brahms sonata that Michael plays in his review. I am not competing with Michael, rather it's a tribute, since frankly it was his video that inspired me to record my own review.
Surprise! Could you tell which is which? The first one was Moreski, the second one was Tosca, and the third one was this that I now use during my everyday work. It's a two double eight with a barrel and a bell from the Tosca. What do I think about sound of these clarinets myself? I don't like the feeling when I play Tosca. It sounds seems to me thin and screeching, like a dentist's drill, but at the same time lacking the power. I liked my old RC Prestigious much more, with its full voluminous and soft timbre. As for the 288, plastic resonates much faster than wood, but at the same time duller than wood, and the sound is light and fluent, although a little superficial, not deep enough. A good wooden barrel and bell greatly correct the situation. I would place it in the middle, nicer than the each of Tosca, but without the depth of RC Prestige. Separately, I want to say that Moreski does a wooden version of 288, which he calls Creator, as well as he makes a copy of Tosca, at least a clarinet with a copy of Tosca Mechanics, which is called Brilliant. I haven't tried any of them, and I'm reporting this just for information. Well, let's move on to the conclusion, and what I think of 288 right now. Three years have passed since my purchase. Perhaps during this time, Moreski changed the design and solved the problems that I immediately informed him about. Perhaps not. You can write to him on AliExpress and ask. Out of the box, it was a semi-finished product. For a beginner student, I'll recommend a used plastic Yamaha instead. After the basic refinement, correction of the re registered tube and the side E-flat, it can already be used to work in a professional orchestra as a replacement for buffet, while preserving the sound and intonation of buffet. You need this adjustment to be done by a professional technician, who, for example, may not be where you live. It's better, of course, to replace barrel and the bell at the same time. It will greatly improve the responsiveness of the brake cross and enrich the sound even more. In this state, I play 288 in my video Vivaldi. You can watch it here, and this is a great illustration of all the possibilities of 288 before deeper correction. This is essentially a buffet festival green line, only for 200 bucks, not for 60 hundreds. If we are talking about a deep correction, then it requires resources, but at the output you can get an instrument with which a top professional buffet out of the box simply cannot be compared. I hope you will want to familiarize yourself with the method of this correction and by the same time support me and my creativity by subscribing to my Boosty page. The link will be in the description. As for buffet, I just don't recommend anyone to buy a new B-flat buffet. Just pass it. A clarinet can be tried, although there are also a lot of nuances, but after modification my Tosca A is decent. Again, after modification, not out of the box. I advise you to try Jubel. Jubel representatives. If you watch this video, I am ready to accept Zenith as a gift. And yet, as for Buffet, you see, after a deep modification, you can make almost any clarinet play. If you are open to an experimentation, then you can try old used E13s. These are good instruments with a very pleasant sound. You just don't need to believe the marketing nonsenses that they are student, intermediate and professional clarinets. There are good clarinets and there are bad clarinets and that's it. The good and the bad. Oh, and the ugly one. That's my B-flat Tosca. Don't let yourself be fooled. Thanks a lot for watching.